Hello, and today we're doing Premier League predictions for match week number 13 of the 2023-24 to Premier League season. Yes, that's right, we're back with predictions on the Roberto the Hornet channel. We're going to speed through these ones because I know that the first game doesn't kick off in that long of time. It's around about three or four hours till the first kickoff, so do get those score predictions in the comment section below as soon as you can. Remember, it's three points for the correct result. Then it's five for the correct goal difference, and then it's seven for the correct scoreline. But let's jump straight into it. We'll, of course, as always, look at how we got on in last week's video, uh, last week's Match Week 12 predictions. So thanks to all that watched it. Uh, your support is always appreciated. Uh, we're currently on 251 subscribers, so let's see if we can get to 300 by 2024 smash that like button if you do enjoy the content it really does help me out and of course hit that subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never ever miss an upload so yeah just looking at our premier league predictions for match week number 12 we had a couple of comments um so actually just the one from colm so thanks again colm always every week commenting your predictions really appreciate it he said wolves won spurs won that was, of course, 2-1 Wolves. Great win for Wolves. Fantastic late, late win. Goals from Pablo Sarabia and, of course, Mario Lamina. Very out of the blue, but Spurs bottled it in that one. And uh, an early goal there from Brennan Johnson, uh, his first um, in, in Spurs colours. And it was a good goal. Really nicely worked between Kulusevski and Pedro Porro. And then a really smart finish from the Wales International. So, yeah, I think Spurs can score goals. We know that. But the last couple of games, two defeats now against Chelsea and Wolves. Defensively, they've had a few injuries where it's hurt them. And obviously Romero's suspension, Udogi suspension, but he's now back Udogi uh, for this Aston Villa game. So that'll be a big boost for their chances. Um, but yeah, ultimately, not a good result for, for Tottenham. Um, and this week they are against Aston Villa, which will be fascinating to see uh, how that goes. But um, yeah, no points, I'm afraid, Calm for your prediction. Um but Wolves are a very good side at the moment. Huang Hee Chan, uh, the likes of Sarabia, the likes of Mateus Cunha, some very good players there and a very good manager. Um, then we got Arsenal Burnley. Uh, you went for a 3 0 um, Colm. Uh, this was actually 3 1, so very, very close indeed. Good win for Arsenal in the end, but it was a hard fought one, not the most fluid performance. Um, I think they are struggling with goals this season, Arsenal, really. They've not been, you know, blowing teams away. Um, Burnley obviously got an equaliser. Um, Brownhill get them back in the game and you think, oh, OK, this could be interesting. Um, Saliba scored. Uh, also, Zinchenko, what a goal from Zinchenko, can I just say. Really impressive stuff. Um, so, yeah, look, good win for Arsenal. Uh, they'll be very happy with that. Um, and a Trossard goal as well. I think he might have collided with the post, though, so that's unfortunate for him. Um, but look, at the end of the day, it was a good result for Arsenal, good win. And now they'll be looking ahead to this game against Brentford, really looking at it as an opportunity because the top two face each other at the Etihad Stadium in the early kickoff. So, so Arsenal know that if they can win their game at the Brentford Community Stadium, the GTEC community, whatever it's called now, that is a result that really is crucial for them because if Spurs um, you know, lose their game, for instance, against the Tricky Villa side, if if that City game ends a draw, then that's a real opportunity for Arsenal to catch up on the chasing pack and, yeah, really get themselves back in the conversation because at the moment, Spurs and Arsenal are slipping a little bit and City and Liverpool have been the ones that have been consistent. So it's a really tricky one, but um, we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, but, yeah, I'm afraid just the three points in that Burnley prediction for you, Colm. You also went for 1-1 uh, in the Palace-Everton game. A lot of people thought this would be a tight one. Palace have been quite good defensively this season. Everton, they've recently had a revival in form, but that revival continued because a shock result, 3-2 away win for the Toffees. And fair play to Sean Dyche. He's got them playing some good football. But since then, their 10-point deduction, not good for off-the-pitch matters. And so they have got Manchester United, a team that have struggled this season generally, but they're actually on quite a good run, even if it has been quite underwhelming 1-0 wins. They've been on good form, have the Red Devils. So it'll be interesting to see how Everton do in this one. But certainly, yeah, good result against Palace. Not many people saw that victory coming. Uh, and the likes of Decore and uh, Idrissa Gay on the on the score sheet. So fair play. Uh, but yeah, no points for you, Colm. Then you said 2-0 uh, Man United-Luton. It was 1-0. Victor Lindelof with the goal. I mean, look, 
United dominated really. Luton had very little in that one. Uh, but it was just a matter of when, not if, they scored that first goal. Man United have not scored uh, enough goals this season and they've not really looked threatening enough. Rasmus Hoyland, I think he went off injured. Um, so that's a bit of a concern. Um, but he hasn't been doing a lot anyway, to be honest. He's not really settled in in the Premier League uh, at the moment. He scored goal in the Champions League, but for some reason can't do it in the league. So it's a struggle for Manchester United to get those goals at the moment. Rashford's not been on form. Fernandez has chipped in with a few goals, but it's not been regular. So I think Man United really need to do well against Everton this week to prove a point that they can they can turn their season around a little bit. But they're still sitting fairly comfortably in, in the table. It's just they're not scoring enough goals to really be that convincing. But still, they got the win, fair play. Um, and uh, and the Swede, Lindelof, with the goal. Then Bournemouth-Newcastle, I mean, this was a big result um, for Bournemouth. 2-0 victory. Big surprise, I think. A lot of people backed Newcastle for that game, but they were just not all you know, at, at the races, Newcastle. And I think their injuries, a bit like with Tottenham, has really hurt them for Newcastle. There's been so many, the likes of um, Botman, the likes of um, Callum Wilson as well. He missed this game against Bournemouth, so it's really not great um, for the Magpies at the moment. Their Champions League involvement has been tiring a lot of their squad out, but also, yeah, those injuries have not been ideal. Um, and so we had another one in this game, I think. Almiron got subbed off early. I think Amaron should be fine for the Chelsea game, but it'll be interesting to see um, how many more injuries basically pile up um, for the Magpies. But yeah, they've got uh, Chelsea this week. So yeah, Chelsea have been scoring a lot of goals recently. Even if they've not necessarily kept the, the goals out, they've, they've done well to score them. So not an easy t test for that Newcastle defence this week, but you know they could still get get some goals from Isak, who might be back. It's a touch and go, we'll have to see. But um, yeah... 2-1 prediction for Colm against Bournemouth, so no points there for you. Also, 3-1 Aston Villa uh, was your prediction. Uh, they had, of course, Fulham. That was a bang-on scoreline prediction, so seven points. Well done for you, Colm. Yeah, very good prediction. I didn't see Fulham scoring, to be honest, because they've not been goal you know, heavy this season. <laughs> Raul Jimenez has struggled, Carlos Vinicius, and you know they had, um, they had a few other players like Muniz recently who went off injured, so... They've not had the goals, but yeah, Jimenez finally gets back to the goals, um, and yeah, it was a it was a nice moment for him to get back in the run. And of course, this week facing his former side Wolves, he's got a bit of a you know contribution to to be had there and a bit of a uh, motive to go for it. So we'll see if he can haunt his former side. But I certainly feel that Fulham, yeah, they they have defensively struggled at times this season, and Villa have just been so strong at Villa Park. So that was a Fairly standard result, really, but yeah, really good performance from the villains. And and John McGinn is in some fantastic form for for that side, and we'll have to see whether he's fit for the game week thirteen. Um, also, Brighton be beating Sheffield United is what Colm had, but that was unfortunately not the, the case. One one draw there. Brighton have underwhelmed the last kind of three or four weeks, not getting the results you'd expect them to. You know, the, against the likes of Sheffield United. Um, I think they only drew in their game uh, a few weeks ago as well. So th they're really not getting the results you'd think they would do. Um, and they've struggled with a few injuries recently as well. Stupinian has still been out. Uh, Ferguson missed the game um, with an injury against Sheffield United. And of course now Mitoma uh, will be ruled out for Nottingham Forest. So they've had a few injuries. As I said with Newcastle, Brighton are struggling with the European football in the Europa League. So... It'll be a tricky test, I think, against Nottingham Forest. Although Forest are without Taiwo Awani, who's now out for a few months. So it's a big moment for Chris Wood. Can he step up like he did against Luton uh, a few weeks back? So really interesting. Um, but that's uh, that's an unfortunate one for Colm. No points there in that brighton Sheffield United game. Uh, and Adingra, fantastic goal. Really, really well done uh, from him. Um, Liverpool-Brentford, you went for a 3-1, Colm. It was, of course, 3-0. So first, the... Fair play to Liverpool getting that clean sheet. You know they've done fairly well for XG conceded this season. Have the Reds, but they haven't kept many clean sheets still. But certainly at home they look a stronger defence and really really good game from Mohamed Salah. This is what he does. Um, really really fantastic brace and he's one away now from 150 goals. So if he can get that in the City game, that would be a big milestone for the Egyptian king. Um, also then we saw a Jota goal, um, he's looking really good Jota I think this season, uh, been unlucky to not get more goals but yeah Brentford not defensively the best uh, in that one uh, but still um, correct result there 
even if it wasn't a correct scoreline. It's three points for you, Colm. Um, West Ham Forest, you went for a 2-1, so that's a five-pointer because you got correct goal difference. It was 3-2 in the end. Great game of football. Jared Bowen keeps on his really, really good run of form. Uh, great header, uh, but also Forrest defensively just kind of causing their own problems. Set pieces, again, it's the, the basics for Forrest, really. They can't seem to stop it, and Suchek with a goal to win it in the end. Uh, but Awani back with a goal. Now he's out injured again, so real frustration for the Forrest fans. Um, but it's good to see that link up. You know, when Awani was fit, with Alanga, they seem to be really on the same wavelength and yeah, Alanga doing really well there. So it's a shame that now he's out, Awani, but I think Forrest still can score goals. It's just keeping them out is their problem. Even with the arrival of Vlakadimos, who has really improved things, you know, Turner was struggling. I think Vlakadimos will make things better, but defensively, there's still a few problems there. Um, now we've got, of course, the game between Chelsea and Man City. Game of the season, no doubt at all. We thought that was the Spurs-Chelsea game, but this was even better. Incredible match to watch. So many things happened. 4-4, what a game. Cole Palmer, absolute nerves of steel to score that penalty right at the end against his former side. And yeah, just a really entertaining game. It had swings, it had roundabouts, it had everything you could possibly want. And yeah, really impressive stuff from Chelsea, who I thought actually deserved something from that game with how well they played. Uh, Man City did take the lead a few times, but um, it was a few, you know, goals that maybe were a bit fortunate, especially that Rodri one. So I think, yeah, Chelsea are, you know, very confident at the moment. They're scoring goals um, and yeah, not a correct uh, result, unfortunately, for Colm, who went for a 2-1 Man City. So yeah, that rounds off the week. How did I get on in uh, my predictions in match week 12? Well, I can tell you that it was a difficult week for many and I found that the case also. A few results that people didn't expect. I did get the correct result in the uh, arsenal Burnley game. I also said 3-0, um, but it was, of course, 3-1, so just the three points for me there. I went for a 3-1 Spurs against Wolves. Not, not at all right there. 1-0 Palace. That was wrong, so no points for me. I also said 2-1 Manchester United against Luton, so five points for the correct goal difference at least. Uh, I went for a 2-0 away win for Newcastle, so that was 2-0, correct score, but the wrong way around. No points. 3-0 was my Villa prediction, so three points there. Unfortunately, did Fulham uh, score, and they, they, they ruined the correct scoreline. Uh, I said 2-0 Brighton against Sheffield United. It was, of course, 1-1, so the right number of goals, just the wrong distribution, really. So zero points there. We also said 3-1 Liverpool against Brentford, just as uh, I think many people did, Colm did as well. So just the three points there because Brentford didn't get that goal. And Bumo missing a big chance in that one. Uh, and then West Ham Forest, I said 3-1 West Ham. So very unlucky there, I think. Just the one goal out from a correct score, um, it being 3-2. And so three points that yet again. And then finally, I said 3-1 Man City. I felt that City would score goals in that one. They did score three. Um, at least you felt they were going to possibly win the game 3-2 uh, at one point. But in the end, fair play, Chelsea kept fighting back, brought it back to 3-3. Then Chelsea went down 4-3 and you think, OK, the game's over. But fair play, uh, it's a late, late penalty. And uh, really, really fair play to Chelsea. So um, no points for me in that City game. And we move on to match week 13 then. Let's dive straight in because, as I mentioned, not too long to go. Uh, just about two hours and a half now. Um, maybe a bit more than that. Three hours, four hours and a half, roughly, till the 12.30 deadline. So let's get stuck in to Nottingham Forest against Brighton. Now, this is the game at three o'clock at the city ground. I go with this one first because I think... It's a big story, isn't it? With Tyro Awani out injured, how can Forrest replace those goals? Well, I think Chris Wood could be the man. He has actually scored a few goals against Bryant in the past when he was playing for the likes of Burnley. So I think he could do all right. I think he might have even scored against Brighton, if I'm mistaken, uh, against Brighton for Newcastle, but maybe it was for mainly Burnley. But I still feel he can score in this one. Brighton defensively have not shown very good things this season. I think Estupinian might still out be uh, injured, possibly. Um, Lamptey might be back, but I think without Matoma, Brighton will struggle to score as many goals. I think Adingra could do well, but with Ferguson you know, not playing last week, he'll probably be fit again this week. Pedro will probably be fit again, so a few 
kind of players of competition there. But I think Forest probably still win this. I just think Brighton defensively, a bit of an issue this season, yet to get a clean sheet. So I'll say Nottingham Forest 2, Brighton Hove Albion 1. I think Brighton's goal scorer will be a Dingra, but then Forest goal scorers will go for Chris Wood. And then the second for the Reds will be midfielder Morgan Gibbs White. Now it's Manchester City Liverpool, the one we're all talking about. It's first versus second. It's the champions versus the last two seasons challenges. Now, of course, last season the challengers were Arsenal, and that was obviously a shame for the Gunners to, in the end, just not quite have enough to to get the job done. Um, the season before that, Liverpool obviously pushed City all of the way, and City winning the title on the final day of the 21-22 season. Incredible stuff, really. Great title race and uh, that winner for Man City against Villa from Ilkay Gundogan did the job. But I look at it and think, when all said and done, uh, I say that, what am I on about? No, that was last season, wasn't it? Sorry, the season before that, <laughs> the season, I'm getting my seasons confused, so apologies for that. No, I actually, I am right. What am I on about? I was right. City had already wrapped up the title, so forget that. Um, Gundogan, it was right. But yeah, no, the point I was getting at was... This season, it feels like the title race is a bit more open. Hopefully, it will be at least a few kind of contenders. But maybe it's open, but it's always inevitably going to be City. Um, but City, they, they might not have it easy this season. Uh, certainly, that's been the signs early on. I know that they always end up coming good by April, but we'll have to see. Um, I think Liverpool, Spurs, Arsenal have all got shouts of, of being in the conversation. I don't think Spurs probably have... Uh, enough in their squad to, to really mount a proper title challenge but um, I think certainly Liverpool can we know they have in the past with Klopp and the squad they've got is still world class and of course Arsenal did it last season so yeah it'll be interesting to see this game at the Etihad they've all, always been quite exciting games um, I think sometimes they've been quite you know tight ones draws in the last few seasons two twos um, and amazing goals I remember that Salah goal against An at Anfield against them uh, just kind of basically doing a messy run, um, going past Cancelo, going past Bernardo Silva and Laporte, and then just getting in from the tightest of angles, in off the post, just an incredible goal, goal of the season. Um, but Salah's record, actually, in his last few appearances against the champions, Man City, is actually very strong. I think he's only blanked, uh, or not returned, sorry, in, in one of those games uh, in terms of goals or assists. So, yeah, I think, um, I think it'll be an exciting game. I think City will go for it. I think with Haaland, he should be fit to play. He obviously did have that kind of game where he wasn't played in the Norway matches, but they were already not going to probably qualify, so that was expected. Um, and I think with City, you know, defensively, they've not been the strongest this season, uh, but they've still kind of got a solid defence with Gvardiol, with D D Diaz as well, and Ake. I think Ake up against Salah could be an interesting head-to-head -head, uh, battle. I think they'd probably do that because Ake's got a bit more mobility around that, but we'll have to see what Pep does. I think it'll be interesting to see if they stick with um, the kind of Doku on the, on the wing because Grealish really could be suited for this kind of game uh, to kind of hug the touchline and, and, and take on Simakas. We'll have to see how that one develops, but really exciting game. I'm going to go for a City win, though. I think City score enough here. Uh, Liverpool will give it their all, though. I'll say City 3, Liverpool 1. I think Salah scores first in this game. Then City's goal scorers, I think two from Erling Haaland and one from the man, the myth, the legend. Yes, he's got a good record against Liverpool. It's the Portuguese, Bernardo Silva. Now, let's move on to West Ham trip to Burnley. Now, of course, Jared Bowen's a big question mark for this one. Will he be fit for game week 13? Well, he did, of course, miss out on the North Macedonia game for England. But even so, if they play Paqueta up front, they play um, Danny Ings or possibly even James Ward-Prowse. I don't know if they would do that, but the point is they still have a fairly decent squad, West Ham. So I think Burnley defensively, especially at Turf Moor this season, have been very, very poor and they've not really found ways of scoring enough goals either. I think La Foster being out uh, is, a, is a shame for, for Burnley. And obviously, my thoughts go out to him with his kind of situation. That's, you know, it's great to see so many people supporting his situation. It's very sad, but, you know, we just got to get, you know, get his arms around him and, and, and support him. But, um, yeah, ultimately, Burnley, uh, they're just not scoring the goals that they need to. And they've had 
uh, defensively a lot of problems. I think um, they've not really settled on a on a good back four. So I just I just don't know where this game really is won for Burnley. I think West Ham's got enough attacking quality. The likes of Mohamed Kudus, the likes of Paqueta, uh, Suchek possibly as well with you know the set pieces that um, West Ham can create from what Ward Prowse's deliveries and you know I don't know I think Burnley do concede a few set piece goals too so might be a tricky one for the Clarets here but I'm going to go for the uh, the Hammers to take home the three points Burnley one West Ham United three um, Burnley probably score and I think this will be a goal from uh, Jay Rodriguez. Then West Ham goal scorers, let's say one from Jared Bowen if he's fit to play. Then we'll say Mohamed Kudus. And finally, we'll go for a goal from Emerson uh, for West Ham. Now, it's Luton against Crystal Palace here at the Kenilworth Road Stadium. And I just don't know if Palace are going to follow up that, that defeat with, a, with another one. I think they're probably going to bounce back. They have played well for most of this season, Palace, although they're not a team that inspire you from an offensive perspective. They don't score loads of goals. Um, and one of the goals was gifted to them, really, against Everton with Edouard, the offensive mix-up between Tarkovsky and, and Pickford. I think Everton, they were really quite good in that game, but I, I don't think Palace should be too concerned. Maybe it's just a one-week thing. I think with Eze now back for Palace and Elise as well being back, that's really big for them. I think they can score goals here. I think Luton defensively is still yet to keep a clean sheet and have conceded something like 22 goals already this season. So I think Palace can feel confident about victory here. I'll say Luton Town nil, Crystal Palace 3. I think Eze will get one for the Eagles. Edward probably scores as well. And then the third goal for Palace, let's say Mark Gay. Now, it's Newcastle v Chelsea. I think this will be a fascinating game. Chelsea obviously scoring goals. Newcastle defensively a bit light on options. I think Livermento um, will play this one because Lewis Hall cannot play. Uh, he's ineligible with his um, parent club. But I think Newcastle, they still can score here because Chelsea defensively have not been strong the last few weeks. Um, and, you know, they have got um, Newcastle a few options like Anthony Gordon, like Joel Linton, um, even with the likes of Wilson out. And, you know, let's see if Isak's ready to play or not. We'll have to see. But I still feel this could be an end-to-end goal from both sides. Newcastle United 1, Chelsea 2. I think Anthony Gordon will score for the home side. But then Chelsea goal scorers will go for... Probably Cole Palmer with another penalty because that's just what he does. And then the second Chelsea scorer, I think, will be actually a bit of Nicholas Jackson. Now it's Sheffield United versus Bournemouth. Now this one, I feel, actually does end in a Sheffield United result because I know Bournemouth just beat Newcastle, but I genuinely think that Sheffield United, these are the sort of games they can target. I think Sheffield United do score here. Whether or not it's enough to win the game or just get the point, I don't know. It's a bit of a 50-50 call, this one. I have just said Sheffield United maybe get the result, but I maybe will go for a more sensible draw here. I think Bournemouth, they did win against Newcastle, but we've got to remember that was a depleted Newcastle side. Um, and a Solanke can always score, of course, but I think Sheffield United probably just needs to see this game as a, a, a game that's, you know, not necessarily winnable, but it's a, it's a match-up they would fancy, I think. So I'll say Sheffield United won, Bournemouth won. The goal scorers in this one, I think Bournemouth to score uh, and their goal comes from uh, Zabani and then Sheffield United goal scorer. I'm going to go for a bit of Cameron Archer. Now, it's Brentford v Arsenal. Now, Brentford, they've really been a weird side this season. I think they started the season really well uh, and they played some great football, scoring goals through uh, Brian Bermo and Johan Visser. But now they don't seem to be scoring goals week in, week out. Um, and, you know, against, I thought... Really, in the game that Brentford played against Liverpool, they should have scored more, and they they had chances. They missed those, and the, 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 and the same came kind of case goes to Burmo really, because Burmo every game has chances, but he doesn't seem to necessarily always score them. Uh, but he always looked good on the eye on the eye test. So I think yeah, he's a good asset for this one. Um, you know, I think he will make life hard for William Saliba, who's been really impressive recently. But I think Arsenal defensively are still questionable. I think, you know, they could keep a clean sheet. But I'm just wondering, Brentford are probably going to go at this one. So I think Brentford score. I'll say Brentford 2, Arsenal 2. I think should be a great game, hopefully. Uh, Brentford goal scorer, though, will go for Burmo uh, once again. And then Joan Visser. But then I think it'll be a comeback draw for the Gunners with goals from Bukayo Saka 
and then a bullet header from Gabriel Magal Hayes. Now, it's Tottenham versus Aston Villa. This should be a fascinating game. Two sides who play a high line. So, should it just be played on the halfway line? Who knows? Um, yeah, it should be exciting. Obviously, we know Son can do well up against high lines. We've seen it in the past. That game, he scored four goals against uh, Southampton a few seasons back. But we know, obviously, without Madison, that's going to be a big loss for Son. His creativity he needs. Um, but I still feel Villa could also score as well here because, you know, Villa's attacking this season has been really good i know they've not been quite as good away from villa park but still can score goals and diaby and watkins have been really good this season so i think this will be a tight tight game i'll go for it though a 3-2 win for spurs and i'll say scorers watkins diaby son to get one and then spurs others goal scorers dayan kulisevsky and then we'll say the winner the, the unlikely hero for spurs Yes, it is going to be Brennan Johnson. Now, it's Everton versus Manchester United at the Goodison Park Stadium. Now, how will they respond to that 10-point deduction? Will the fans be fuming? Probably will. Um, but also, they have been in good form. So it's a bit of a contradiction, really. Um, Man United, on the other hand, they have obviously problems off the pitch. We've known that for a while with the Glazers. But they are in quite good form. So it's it's an exciting game, I think. I should hope that's a game that should be good to watch. But I will have to wait and see. I think Everton do get something from this, though, because, you know, away from home, I still don't trust Manchester United implicitly. I think they could concede easily in this game. But I'll say Everton won, Manchester United won. And Man United's goal scorer. I've got a feeling that uh, Harry Maguire is going to get a bullet header in this one uh, to, uh, to take the lead for his, uh, his side. But then the equaliser for Everton... I actually predict will end up being uh, a little bit of uh, Abdoulaye Decoré, who actually scores quite a few times against Manchester United. Now, it's Fulham versus Wolves to end up match week 13. Um, this will be an exciting game, I think, because Fulham this season, yeah, they have struggled defensively, but they also can score goals um, at times. I think the creativity of Timothy Castagna could also help them out. But I think Wolves this season have really impressed. You know, they had not many resources and ultimately Gary O'Neill's come in and made them a very good side. They don't obviously attack in every match and this will be an interesting game there to see their approach away from home. But I think with players like Huang Hee Chan, players like Cunha uh, and Kalajic, who has been playing a few more minutes recently, they could be better and they could score more goals. So I, I would back Wolves in this one. I'll say Fulham won Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. I think Mateus Cunha will score first for the Wolves team. Then it will be a goal from Fulham by, uh, let's say, Timothy Castagna. And then Wolves' second goal, I'm going to say it's Hwang Hee Chan, the South Korean. Okay, that's my predictions for match week number 13. Hope you have enjoyed. Apologies for the sounds in the background, just ignore that. But I hope you have enjoyed. Get your score predictions in the comments ASAP. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.